Hi folks, uh, Tom again. I thought I'd share a technique that I learned when I started reading initially, and it's not something I hear people talk about much anymore, but it's helped me a lot over the years, particularly when I'm doing a one-card reading, because it helps me add some nuance. And it's sort of a simplified way of thinking about elemental dignities. And what that refers to, is sort of a fancy name, uh, or my understanding of it anyway, is that it speaks to the relationship between the elements. Um, for example, water and fire are notoriously adversarial. Um, water and air, air being sort of a, a, I hate this masculine and feminine stuff, but it's what I learned. Um, air being a masculine uh, element and water being a feminine element. It's not necessarily a major conflict, but they're not complementary, so there's a moderate conflict. Now, earth and water both being feminine elements, they're complementary. So, and, and then, of course, water and water are a perfect match. So, so what, what, what I do with this, and here's a little chart that I made, and, and this, again, is what I learned. There are other ways of doing it. And, in fact, when I learned it initially, there were no degrees. So something was either complementary, so water and earth would be complementary, or uh, adversarial, so fire and air would conflict with water. I added the degrees after reading about this stuff. But basically what happens is when someone asks me a question and I have, I'm doing a one card reading, um, let's say that it's a relationship question. Um, and we're talking about a romantic relationship. If it's romantic or friendship related, I'd probably assign it to water. Um, if it were family, it might be earth. But in this case, it's, it's a water question uh, because it's about a love life or a friendship. So what this means for me, it's a one card reading, and if I assign it water, and I get a water card, if I get a cups card, that's a perfect match. And what that would say to me, in terms of reading that card, is that it's a really deep and powerful event in the person's life. It would tell me that the card complements the question perfectly, so that there's a real relationship between the card and the question. It really um, suits the question perfectly. Uh, there's not a lot of conflict between the card and the question. Um, so it really just sort of underlines the, the question for me. Um, now if I get a, a, a fire card there, if a wands card comes up with a water question, that tells me that there's a layer of conflict in this reading that I need to pay attention to. So, for example, let's say that the relationship question it comes up in the Eight of Cups, so it's a water question and a water card, then that really speaks to me about the dramatic relationship between the question and the card and how important this is to the current right now. And it just is a sign that this is the perfect card or the perfect suit to come up. So it speaks a lot to me. And, 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 um, so I talk about the journey that this person is going to go on and how profound that's going to be. But let's say that it's a relationship question and the three of wands comes up. This might tell me that there's a real powerful conflict between work, let's say, creative work, and the relationship. So that the relationship may be harming the work that this person needs to be focusing on or the work that this person is focusing on and wants to be focusing on is conflicting and causing problems in the relationship. So the fire and the water element there tells me that there's a real internal struggle going on. Um, now, if it was a swords card that came up, let's say the four of swords, it might tell me that there's a little bit of conflict going on, that this person really needs to take care of themselves, they need to let their mind rest, they need to stop thinking so much about the problem, and that that thinking is causing a lot of drama in the relationship, but it's not sort of an irreconcilable difference, where with the with the wands card, it makes me feel like something's got to give. Either it's got to be work or the relationship, you can't have both. Um, the swords tells me that it's it's a more gentle conflict. If it were a Pentacles card that came up because it's complementary, it would tell me that uh, there's not a lot of struggle there. And in this case, we'll say this person might be trying to juggle um, family and this relationship, uh, their, their family and their job, or whatever the case is. Um, and that might be, um, they might be feeling some pain about that, but it's doable. And maybe even a good thing that they're getting exercise out of this. And I'm just pulling that out, you know, um, just 
based on the image. Um, but it's a complementary thing. So this really just helps me add a lot of nuance, particularly when I'm struggling with a card. If, if you know, if I get a, um, a question about a relationship and, and a really strange card comes up, um, like the Seven of Swords, and I think, oh gosh, you know, there's sneakiness there. Um, and I know that it's it's not a complementary element. Um, it's not the biggest conflict with a relationship card. It's not a fire card, but the air card tells me, oh, this is causing some some struggle. This is causing some real conflict in the relationship. There might be a lack of trust. Um, but because it's not a fire card, it might tell me that it's not an insurmountable problem. So, if that makes sense. Whereas, you know, let's say the... Um, uh, the ten of of swords came up. I'm just looking for it here. I thought I had it, and it's hidden away. Of course, it's going to be at the bottom. Um, well, let's say it's the nine of uh, wands came up in that situation, and there's a real block here. Uh, that might tell me that this is a real problem. That for the relationship to deal to 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 be solved. Um, that they might need therapy. They might need to elicit some creative ways to solve the relationship because of how defensive they are and how crafty they've gotten at defending themselves against each other. Um, so that's that. Uh, now, if it's a if it's a major arcana card, um, major arcana cards are always uh, themselves. They're they're not necessarily adversarial or complementary because they. I, I hate the term spirit in terms of an element. It just, I don't know, it seems strange to me. But um, because they are that, uh, they're sort of ethereal. They are not necessarily, they're, they're powerful on their own. If you wanted to, you could say that if the card were upright, that it was dignified toward, that it were complementary, and it reversed, it was ill-dignified or adversarial. I don't really do that myself, but you certainly could. Um, you know, so you could say that if it were upright, it's dignified toward the re the relationship, towards the cups question, and that means that the relationship is going through a transformation. If it's reversed, you could say that the relationship is over, that because it's dignified against it, um, dignified using the term dignities. Uh, so that is just a, a simple way to go. Um, it's helped me a lot with those with those readings where a strange card comes up or where I just need to gauge the intensity of a conflict or that sort of thing. Look at the mess I've made. So anyway, this chart, um, I'll just leave this on here for a second. You can make your own, and you can assign your own relationships and degrees. Um, I just made this pretty quickly. But again, just to sort of go through, if I got um, a question about work, about a big commission I was expecting. That would be a fire question. And if I got a fire uh, card, that'd be a great sign, no matter what the card was. Even if it was something heavy like the Ten of Swords, it would tell me that this is going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a big burden, but it's going to be a big payoff. Whereas if the Ten of Cups came up, it might tell me that there's going to be a lot of issue with this. You're, you're going to um, either expect a big emotional reward that's not going to come, or you're going to have to give up a lot of the um, romantic time that you have in order to do it. Um, so with fire, and you'll see that they repeat because you sort of get through it, but you can you can do this yourself if you want to. Um, so, yeah, um, that's elemental dignities, or at least the simplistic version of elemental dignities that I learned. Um, one other thing that you can do, and this is actually something that I, I um, have done a lot of, uh, it used to be one of my favorite uh, spreads, which was that I would do um, an elemental spread, and uh, it would work sort of pentacle-shaped. Um, but uh, we'd have card one, which would be water, and then we'd have card, oops, card two, which would be fire, and we'd have card three, which would be air, and card four, uh, the earth, and then to make it sort of pentacle-shaped, uh, card five would be spirit. 
And so what you would do is lay out, shuffle and lay out the cards, and then you would say that water is whatever the water is in their life. So romance, love life, etc. Uh, fire would be creative work, your life's work, your that sort of thing. Air would be what's going on mentally, um, what's going on in your mind. Um, earth would be what's going on in your everyday life, your sort of banalities of family or job, and then spirit, your sort of spiritual journey. Um, and you would read the dignities that way. So if you got a water card in the water slot, uh, that'd be great. And if you got a water card in the fire, uh, that would be bad news. Um, same thing with air. If you got an air card and it was earth, that'd be a struggle. If you got an earth card and an earth, that'd be happy times. And then um, anything that showed up in the spiritual thing would be great, but if you got a major there, that'd be super great. Um, <laughs> sort of a simplistic <laughs> way of talking about it. But anyway, that was a spread that I, and it is a spread that I use a lot when someone wants just a general life reading, because it just adds some nuance. So it covers a lot of things. We've got love life and romance. We've got uh, our life's path, our creative work. We've got what's going on in our heads, what's going on with our finances or our family, what's going on in our spiritual path. Um, and you get the relationship between the cards, but you also get the dignities. Um, so this is a water card, so that should be some magic. So anyway, that's another way of using dignities with a multiple card spread. Uh, and you could also look at, for example, the number of, um, the number of, uh, cards in a spread. So if you do that and you have, you know, four water cards, that might tell you that in their life right now, they're preoccupied with a relationship issue. Um, or if they got, you know, uh, three fire cards and two majors, it might tell you that uh, the creative work they're doing or what their passion is in life um, is, is really moving them along in their spiritual journey or that their creative work is their spiritual journey. Um, so you can count the number of cards. Um, and if you get one of each, then that might tell you that they're very balanced in life right now. Um, so anyway, those are just a handful of ways that I use um, elemental dignities or the version of them that I learned. And I hope they are helpful for you. I hope they prove useful and, and help you add some nuance to your readings. Uh, it's not something you use all the time necessarily, but it can definitely, definitely be a great thing to have in your back pocket, particularly when you're faced with a card and you're saying, why is this here? You know, why is this weird card showing up for this pretty straightforward question? As always, if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. Uh, otherwise, have a great week.